Hello there, and welcome to Surgical Pathology, Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program today is a courtesy of uh, Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a collaboration with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Uh, my time is provided by uh, the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. We're going to look today uh, into another area of gynecologic pathology. Uh, this is a 56-year-old woman who has noted an enlarging mass in her vulva. Of note, six years previously, she had a nephrectomy for stage one renal cancer uh, and has done well since that time. So a soft tissue mass was removed by the surgeon uh, just beneath the labia majora. Um, rather uh, large in size, um, and their initial impression was that this might be a, uh, an adnexal tumor of the vulva or possibly a, a tumor uh, involving the uh, uh, perineal uh, glandular tissue such as uh, Bartholin's gland or so forth. On low power, we can see that it's a, a ragged uh, surface but somewhat lobulated. It's a fairly cellular and nested uh, tumor that has an epithelial configuration with areas of necrosis. Uh, and it doesn't have an infiltrative pattern. It looks rather nodular and rounded. So this certainly could be an adnexal tumor um, as a possibility. However, it does uh, appear to be fairly high grade with the presence of necrosis. That raises concern. As we get a little bit closer in, we can see there's a fair bit of nuclear variability. Some of these uh, blue nuclei stand out more prominently. And the cells are nested in rounded groups uh, with a uh, vascular pattern around each of these nests and some sort of hemorrhage or necrosis in the middle uh, of these nests as well. We'll go a little bit higher magnification here. And, and we can see, again, these uh, cells have uh, fairly distinct uh, cytoplasmic borders and areas, uh, dark nuclei, some areas of uh, central necrosis, but sort of a, a clearing pattern uh, as noted by these prominent uh, cytoplasmic borders. Uh, so this is a, a pale cell carcinoma or a, a clear cell type of tumor uh, with a little bit of eosinophilic granular cytoplasm. I think most observers would look at this and say, this looks like a clear cell carcinoma. And certainly given the patient's history of a renal uh, tumor, uh, the possibility of a metastasis uh, would loom rather large. Uh, metastatic disease uh, coming to the, uh, to the vulva is not particularly common, certainly much less common than primary tumors, even probably uh, less common than primary adnexal tumors. Uh, such as a Bartholin's gland tumor. Here again, we can see some of these nuclei have prominent nu uh, nucleoli, such as this one here. Uh, so they're not just simple uh, low-grade nuclei. Uh, they have the higher-grade nuclei that we might see uh, with uh, clear cell carcinoma from the kidney. Now, obviously, there are other clear cell tumors that we would want to be concerned about. Uh, certainly, a clear cell carcinoma of the vagina extending down into the vulva is a possibility. Clear cell carcinomas occur in the cerv cervix, as well as endometrium and ovary. So they're a frequent uh, primary tumor in the uh, gynecologic tract as well. So these uh, make us wonder, do we have evidence here that this is uh, metastatic? Do we see any areas where we have uh, intravascular tumor involving any of these vessels surrounding the tumor that could explain uh, that sort of extension? Um, or point towards a metastatic lesion versus a primary uh, tumor in this location. Uh, and I don't see that uh, on our initial evaluation of this slide. Uh, there don't seem to be other clues here. Um, the original evaluator did uh, comment here that our margin uh, over here, as, which has been marked with uh, India ink along the surface, is interrupted and we have tumor uh, closely uh, involving uh, this uh, inked surface uh, after processing. So the lesion has not been completely excised, uh, or at least uh, from a pathologist standpoint has not been. So how are we going to sort this out? 
Uh, well, obviously, uh, the best special stain would be, of course, to compare with the patient's prior renal cell carcinoma and see, do they look similar? Do they have a similar grade? Are they, is, is the renal tumor a clear cell type tumor? Lacking that, however, we might uh, think about other ways as well. Uh, let's talk first, though, a little bit about just metastatic carcinoma in general to the vulva. Uh, it's important to note that uh, it is much less common than primary malignant tumors. Um, and when we do encounter uh, carcinomas uh, that are metastatic in this site, usually they have come from a gynecologic uh, location, the cervix or the ovary, occasionally from the rectum. And then other sites, uh, kidneys, pancreas, uh, lung, et cetera, et cetera, those are all much less uh, common. Uh, they do tend to localize to the labia, perhaps because of the hypervascular uh, uh, nature of that uh, tissue. Uh, and sometimes they can mimic primary tumors, particularly we might think here of uh, squamous cancers of the cervix, which can be P16 positive, just as primary squamous tumors of the vulva can be P16 positive. And we'd want to look for uh, evidence of uh, surface involvement uh, to make sure that we had a truly primary tumor and not something that was lurking just beneath the mucosa. We might compare uh, this with uh, what, say, a clear cell carcinoma of the ovary uh, might appear. And here's an example that we've pulled from our files uh, today. Uh, as you can see, uh, this tumor also has a, a, a very vascular structure, but appears a little bit more papillary. Um, it has uh, the same sort of eosinophilia to some of these cells, uh, but we see a little different uh, arrangement. We don't see the central. Uh, necrotic uh, feel uh, to these uh, cells. Um, and uh, if we look uh, around, we can again see these prominent cell borders between cells, variable nuclei, and so forth. Um, with clear cell tumors originating in the uh, ovary or even in the endometrium, we would tend to see more of an open glandular appearance uh, rather than that nested appearance that we saw uh, in the uh, uh, metastasis today. Um, and we would uh, like to find uh, things like hobnail cells and so forth, or maybe hyaline bodies, uh, which are not particularly prominent in every case. And as uh, this is an example, we have clear cytoplasm, we have high-grade nuclei, but we don't see the hobnailing nuclei with any frequency here. Um, and we don't see a lot of uh, either stromal hyalinization, maybe a little right here, right here, right here. Uh, but not much in the way of hobnail uh, nuclei. Um, so maybe the brown stains will be the ro route to go to uh, make the uh, comparison uh, work out. Um, uh, there are some useful immunohistochemical uh, uh, findings that could help us sort this particular case out. So um, renal cell tumors, clear cell carcinoma of the ovary, clear cell carcinoma of the endometrium. Now, differentiating these two is not uh, oftentimes a problem, but uh, if in the case of metastasis, it might be worthwhile to, to have that. CD10 is an antibody that can be uh, nonspecific, but in this particular differential, it would be specific, uh, more for favoring renal cell carcinoma. CK7 would be more, much more likely to be strongly encountered in uh, ovarian or endometrial tumors. MDM2, a marker uh, often associated with some specific uh, uh, mutational status, is uh, found to be more commonly expressed in uh, endometrial tumors, hardly at all, rarely in uh, renal cell tumors. So that could be a useful marker. Uh, carbonic anhydrase 9, uh, again, another marker quite uh, strongly expressed, again, non-specifically in uh, renal cell tumors. and not in ovarian tumors. There's limited data on endometrial tumors, but we would presume probably similar to ovarian tumors. And then NAPSIN A would be more frequently uh, positive in ovarian or endometrial clear cell tumors and much less uh, commonly encountered in renal tumors. So there's some good antibodies there to use. Now in the workup of our particular case, an additional antibody was used, the RCC, the renal carcinoma antigen uh, marker was positive as was CA uh, 9 uh, and uh, cytokeratin 7 was uh, negative, and CD10 was positive. 
There are a few other tumors which might enter into the differential here. Uh, uh, Picoma, perivascular epithelioid tumors uh, can have uh, clear cytoplasm. They usually look a little bit more sarcomatoid, not as vascular as this. Um, and they would have, again, a different uh, profile when being HMB45 positive um, and uh, not positive with uh, epithelial markers. Clear cell sarcoma and some squamous cell carcinomas with very clear cytoplasm might also be confused in this case. So uh, the immunohistochemistry helped us uh, in this case. And so the final sign-out diagnosis is metastatic clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Uh, involving the vulvar soft tissues. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, short little uh, jaunt uh, through this vulvar tumor, and that's brought some things back into focus. Thanks for joining me, and I hope that you'll uh, uh, subscribe, share your comments below, um, and uh, or directly uh, send them to me if you uh, are inclined. Uh, thanks very much for uh, joining us, and we'll look forward to seeing you again on another uh, one of these episodes of Digital Surgical Pathology Sign Out.